Hi, I'm Dave Whipple and you're watching Bush Radical. In another video I talked about my favorite axe and why it was my favorite and it was this guy. And that's because it's, uh, it's modestly sharp, it's a full size head on a 32 inch handle and it can do everything. You can build a cabin with this axe and I've done it before and I'll show you guys that in a future video. But the reason I think this axe is, is perfect for, for the bush is it's a happy medium. It's got a 32 inch handle that won't wear you out if you have to use it a lot. It's got a full size bit which will do real work, not just uh, an afternoon camping work, but like real work. You can, you can split a rick of wood with this axe. You're not gonna split a rick of wood with your standard boys axe that's very popular in, uh, in the outdoors community. This is my pick for about the best all around axe. What I wanna talk to you guys today about is uh, is there a perfect axe? That one is as close to perfect as I can think of. And I've used the, I've used this axe hundreds and hundreds of times. I've had it for years and years, and it has done everything I've wanted it to do. But I will say this: there is no such thing as the perfect bush axe. And the reason I say that is this: if an axe splits really good, it's not going to fell very good. If it's ground to be a splitting axe, it's going to be a terrible felling axe. If it's ground to be a felling axe, it's going to be a terrible splitter and dangerous. So there really is two kinds of axes. An axe that's more tailored to split and an axe that's more tailored to fell. Let me give you an example. This axe right here, this is a very good splitting axe. It's got a 36 inch handle, so you're working a lot closer to the ground. It's got a nice fat bit and it's blunt and it's dull. Now a dull axe, you might just be ready to start commenting and flaming and stuff. But the fact is, if you're just gonna have an axe that just splits and you want it to be a great splitter, it shouldn't be sharp. I mean, you can put an edge on it to where it at least comes to a point, but it should never be sharp. Because sooner or later, you're probably gonna hit yourself with it and you're gonna wish it wasn't sharp. Now I was just using this axe the other day to, uh, to take some notches out of a tree that I was felling with a chainsaw. It got bound up a little bit and I had to take a little bit of material out because it was very straight and it leaned the wrong way. And using this axe as a felling axe for any amount of time just reinforced the thought that it sucks as a felling axe. It's got a, it's got a dull bit, it's got a fat bit, it's got a really long handle that tires you out. It's not a good felling axe but it's a good splitting axe. Now this axe, on the other hand, this axe is set up for felling. It's got a bit that's ground nice and thin. It's got a very short handle and it's got a nice flat bit. Now with an axe like this, you can take some material out, but I would never want to split with it. It has too short of a handle. If you are splitting a piece of wood that's on a splitting block and you miss, you could take a leg off with it. Also, this, this axe is kept nice and sharp. You don't want to split with a really sharp axe if you can avoid it. I will say this, if you, if you, have, to, if you have to have an axe to do one thing, I would say that it would be better to have a splitting axe than a felling axe. Most people don't fall many trees with an axe to start with. What they generally do is they split wood with it, whether it's in camp, whether it's at home. And, a, and an axe that is gonna be good for splitting is not gonna be the axe that you're gonna really hurt yourself with. An axe that is really good for felling should be razor sharp. And it should just be used for felling. And you should not split with it unless you want to have a problem. We've seen this on TV and, and you, it's just been a reoccurring theme of people injuring themselves with razor sharp axe. And nine times out of ten it's because they're splitting with it. A razor sharp axe should be used to fell trees with and that's it. And you should have a different axe to split with. So if you just have one axe, please don't keep it razor sharp. I know that's completely counterintuitive to everything. Everybody wants a razor sharp ax. But if you're gonna have a razor sharp ax, 
No, this is just a rabbit trail. So to try to wrap this all up into one quick idea, there's no such thing as a perfect axe. There's an axe that would be perfect for felling. And then there's an axe that would be perfect for splitting. But you can't have one that is perfect for both. That axe doesn't exist. If it's going to be a great felling axe, it's going to be a dangerous splitting axe. And if it's going to be a great splitting axe, it's going to stink at felling. And that's all there is to it. We can come to a good compromise as to uh, what would be the best axe to take out into the woods. That is going to be your one axe to do everything that you want to do with an axe and you're going to make it the best happy medium of the two. That in my opinion is an axe like this and I've already done that video. The reason I think that this is a perfect axe is because it's got a good middle of the road handle, it's got a full size head and it's moderately sharp. Not razor sharp, not dull, it's middle of the road and it can split decent and it can fell decent. It's not going to maim you if you hit yourself in the leg with it. it. You're probably more likely to break a bone than to cut your leg off. But an axe that is great at one thing inherently is not going to be good at the other. I'm not saying you can't use it for the other thing, but I'm saying it won't be good for the other thing. So what's the point? Buy more than one axe. But if there's one, if there's one good takeaway from this that's, that's usable, that's something that should be remembered, a great fouling axe should be shaving sharp and you should never split with it. It should have a shorter handle that you can work without wearing yourself out, which inherently makes it more dangerous to split with. A splitting axe should have a blunt blade, which should stink to fell, and it should have a long handle, which also will stink to fell, because it'll just wear you out. So does a perfect axe exist? No, it doesn't buy more than one axe. If you have a different point of view on this, please feel free to click on the comments below and share that. That's what this channel is about. Is It's about sharing. It's about talking about the, uh, the things that we all kind of have a common interest in. Whether you're a bushcrafter or a survivalist or just somebody who lives, lives remote and rustic, we all have a lot of these overlapping interests. So please click on below and, and share your thoughts on this subject. This is Dave Whipple with Bush Radical. Thanks for watching. Be radical, eh?